Don't forget to play Inc. with Season 1 Finale of Walking Dead. Wait a sec. Season 1 Finale of The Walking Dead. What a show. Um, I watched it yesterday, so I'm going to try remembering. But it's a pretty, like, emotional show. So, in episode 5, we knew that the CVC was kind of the only way. We knew that there was somebody inside. We also knew that uh, Dr. Jenner was still alive and he was keeping the facility uh, there. So, they thought it kind of, kind of fucking cool. What if, because there's food for everybody, there's booze for everybody, there's hot water. And it's kind of cool because... In a very smart way, it reminds us of... It's amazing. It reminds us of the first episode that Shara seen with, uh, with Rick, Morgan, and Dwayne. How much it was appreciated. We're seeing everybody, how they're reacting. How Amy was just... And Andrea, who just lost Amy, she's reacting. How Shane is starting to drink. How Rick is really happy. And there's... Like... It's amazing because... We take this for granted. And even Dr. Jenner's like, yo, these guys have been through a lot. I love the scene between Rick and Dr. Jenner where they're like, yo, you don't know what it sounds like out there. It's horrible. It's a miracle that we're still alive. We're so fucking lucky to still be alive, you know? And, and you feel for that because we saw them getting through shit. And again, it, it's kind of funny because in season one, they're not that much of a survivor. But in season two... Oh, and, and season 11, they can take care of, like, a, a herd of zombie by themselves, you know? So it's kind of cool that we're seeing the evolution. We're seeing the, um, this episode serve one big purpose. One big purpose. That big purpose is actually, uh, it's actually about trying to explain the, uh, the virus. Try to explain what's going on. And, um, this because it's, it's coming from a comic perspective. So the comic was the original art. The series is based on the comic. But this wasn't in the comic. So it's one of the first time where they really shifted. And since Robert Kirkman, the original author of the comic, never explained where the virus come from. Then it's kind of cool that we're getting to explain where the, where the virus, the virus comes from. It's kind of cool that we're getting to explain, like, yo, this is what we think. Um... But it's not clearly explained by the pick of Robert Kirkman. We're seeing how it happens, how, like, the brain is going to reactivate, but you lose everything. You're just like a, like a fucking puppet. And it's also something that we saw, we, we realized. It's kind of cool that we're seeing this explained from a scientific perspective because whenever you have a zombie apocalypse, you're always going to think it where it's coming from. You know, I was playing Resident Evil uh, before yesterday, and it comes to my mind. Where's it coming from? Like the, the the episode was phenomenal because also it's about it's about how, when so the zombie right being there you always have this state of okay well we have to be careful we have to be thinking about survival we have to be thinking about tomorrow how we're gonna be surviving but in the safety of the CVC on the ground whatever. Um, bunker, or let's call it bunker. Um, it, it does feel, it really does feel like it's, uh, uh, like the little thing happens. For example, Shane, who still loves Lori, he goes to talk to her and she, she push him back, but, and Shane, he, he like, is insisting. And although I think that's an asshole move, first of all, he's drunk. And of all, she never gave him a reason. She's like, oh, you really matter to me. She, she said that she said Shane really mattered to me. And then when Rick came, she doesn't give a shit about Shane. And although, understandably, she prefers, she's in love with Rick, and understandably. But there's still this emotion of, at least he needs closure, right? Tell him it's finished. We had this amazing uh, scene where, again, we're trying to... I, I love the scene where we're trying to explain the virus. Because Jenner, you know, he, you, you feel all the way through. He didn't know how to solve this, right? And although he shares, and it's to me, it's insane, because although he shares everything he knows, it's still nothing. It's still absolutely nothing, right? We learned that his wife was the last last, last patient, and the fact that we lost the patient, it wasn't, in the beginning, we see that he loses his sample. In the sample, he loses is his wife. So you think that, oh, the sample, it was fresh, right? It was wife, so it was emotionally attached to it. And by having his wife, you can tell that he was, like, very, very focused on doing it. Right? And then um, he, he, he lost, like, focus and he became drunk. And the old episode is, again, is finding this normalcy and this chaos. 
I did an episode. It's amazing. It's really amazing because we're asking a question. It's basically um, the right to die uh, medically. So basically, um, it's a uh, they have a choice. So the the, the countdown happens. There's no more like fuels, and there's an auto they come. They there's an auto decontamination process, which is basically burning the entire thing because the virus they keep inside. And even the way they explain it, why it's gonna happen, it makes sense. Even the way they're explaining that, yo. This is logic. I don't know if it's like that in real life, but it does make sense. And as long as it makes sense, you're able to accept it. Right? One other part that's really cool is that we're we're seeing uh we're we're seeing how different people they react. Some people they want to die, right? Some people they want to stay alive. And we're seeing that it's kinda cool because we're seeing the reaction. And at the end there's only one that decides that decides to, to, to die. Right? But we had a lot of people that could have said, yo, we're staying. For example, the Morales could have stayed. Jim could have stayed. If Jim was infected, he could have stayed. Right? And uh, there's this amazing scene with Amy that wants to stay. But... I don't remember the... Dale, he says, no, you're not going to stay. And admittedly, it's very selfish of Dale. And Jim was possibly not thinking uh, properly. And Dale, my issue with Dale is he always doing these small things. Which, admittedly, are for the better. When he, when he takes the weapon from Shane... The better when he when he protects Andrea, it's better when he when he asks people to say, "Hey, we're human," it's for the better. But all of these little things, he's taking a lot of responsibility, he's a lot of risk. He knows that Andrea is suicidal, and she can go crazy. She can be a danger to the group. He doesn't care. He cares about her. And ultimately, and like I was saying before, if Rick is willing to make stupid choices for being quote unquote good. Dale is constantly making a choice. Um, Rick is also very problematic. He understands. Like when he when he's able to convince Jenner that to leave them out. Right? And Jenner, although admittedly he's a good character, he's an asshole also, because they trap them. It's kinda cool that they, they get out. But and then we got that scene between Jenner and Rick, and that scene is basically him telling we're all infected. The, the virus is airborne. So if you die, everyone dies. So ultimately, this this matter, yes and no. This matter when you know that in the prison, a lot of people get infected. We could have prevented that by being honest. But all in all, it doesn't change shit. Because look at the group. The group are less than 10 people. Right? So it's not like a mass, a mass of one person is going to die. And everybody's going to turn, right? <laughs> and that's basically the episode the episode was also like I said the feeling of being safe and what I think there's always a need for problems if there's a bigger problem to focus on we can focus on the bigger problem which is zombies if there's a smaller problem to focus on which is the intricate relationship or inter inter relationship of the group for example again Shane and Lori, um, Rick and Shane, you know, and it's just a, a situation where we see that those people they have issues, and those issues are more than a zombie. It's normal for a group to have issues, but they're not gang solved. And so, love you guys, peace. Dom Link is your boy Inc. A small change for season one, episode six. Completely forgot the scene in the beginning with uh, Shane and Rick. And this means a lot because Rick, we know he was in a coma because he got shot, right? Um, Shane, he went to the, to the hospital to get him out. When, when he saw that the shit was going down, uh, Shane actually went to get Rick. And we feel like Shane is an asshole because he, he, he slept with Laurie. But this is a proof that he went to check if Rick was dead. This is a proof that he was telling the truth. And, um, you know, people are, are saying, oh, well, he could have made it up. Ah, it's hard to say. It's hard to say because we don't get a clear understanding of what's going on, right? We we know that he put um so Shane you see Rick and he, he really tried to help him out, which is lovely because they're best friend. Then we get a a sign where um Rick Shane puts his so a lot of people are saying that Shane had feeling for Lori before, right? They had a feeling for Lori. A lot of people are saying that. So Shane puts his his head on Rick, right? Chess to say yo um. If you're, 
if you're uh, if you're still alive, like let me know. And it's crazy because it tells Rick, give me a sign, and the sign is the, sh the screenshot down, which basically like yo means like oh I'm dead. And it's funny because I was thinking about that in the second season, episode one, where Rick asked for Jesus for a sign, right? So Shane asked Rick for a sign, and the screenshot down. And you see him put it. It's, is here on the chest and there's a chance that he heard a heartbeat he decided not to do it but there's another chance that he wasn't sure what he was listening for and it's funny because why put a bed in front of the room of Rick if, it, if he didn't think he was dead or well, possibly because he wants to have he wants Rick to be able to die alone and because they don't know that if you die you get turned they possibly want Rick to have like a a rest in place, a rest in peace place. Could do a tomb. Let's do a fucking hospital room, right? There's also this this need for time where the people, who, everybody's getting shot, and it's a cool scene where Shane sees doctor and patient and and nurse getting shot, even though they're not affected. So he knows he's gonna get shot, and he knows he's gonna he's gonna die. So he hides behind Rick bed. He didn't protect Rick, but he died. So there's this proof that. Shane was trying to do good, but again, he wanted to survive, wanted to get out of here. Mm, it's hard, it's hard because he did do a lot, he did do a lot for Rick. It wasn't enough. And there's a scene again in the season six, in episode six, where um, Shane goes to Lori, and Lori not having given him permission. And Lori's saying, Oh, Shane, he told me he's, he was dead. And Shane, we thought he was dead, so there's this part of Shane that doesn't believe that Rick is alive because but like yo I saw you dead I said you're, you're not supposed to there's also this part that maybe feels guilty because maybe feel like he abandoned Rick and um this is part where Rick he takes a, a bit of the control of the group right so there's all of these that comes together and it just proved that Shane did try to help Rick but at the end it was better maybe if Rick was gone um it's not clear it's not super clear um, but I thought it was a cool moment, and I don't know why I didn't talk about it, but hey, here you go. Mm. Shane is one of my favorite character, and arguably, I think Shane's a better character in the very first season. What the fuck do I know? Right? <laughs>